cancel culture a threat or a needed social change. Let me welcome our dear guests who have joined us today. Let me welcome uh, all of you, uh, members of our audience online and on site, and all panelists who will take place in this discussion. So, uh, we have uh, online a Professor Mati Gudula, an MP. Um, we um, and unfortunately, uh, Dr. Drelik uh, couldn't join us today as uh, his ill. Uh, but we have uh, Professor Rosiak, a philosopher from the University of Łódź, and Dr. Bartłomiej Wróblewski, an MP to the Polish same and um, uh, academic a university teacher. So um, welcome once again. And let's start uh, with the final note delivered by Professor Roszkowski, how to fight, because it goes beyond any doubt that in the Western countries, the non-dominant ideology is based on the Marxist ideology. Uh, so that permeates uh, the, the societies in the Western Europe. And we will uh, try to answer how the situation uh, looks in Poland. And we uh, will try to respond to the question whether this uh, new uh, ideology uh, really gives more freedom. And maybe we will try to provide some answer to the question asked by Professor Roszkowski, uh, how to fight. So uh, let's start with Professor Maciej Gdula, who will present his views on these uh, social changes. Because professor think that it is more an opportunity than threat. Yes, when you mentioned the fight, I started to think whether you mean how we should fight with what comes from Western countries or with ourselves, because we are not on the same side uh, when it comes to these topics. So the, if you um, ask how to fight, I have to present what I believe in, what uh, to me, something that comes from uh, some external sources is an opportunity rather than a threat. And then I will have to respond to the question how to fight with ourselves when against uh, others to uh, allow Poland to let Poland survive. This is an important part of this discussion. And um, with a re reference to your question, what to do not to perish, um, I try to quote data presented by the Chief Stats Office. Despite six years of uh, rule by the right, we can see Poland at the brink of extinction. So it's not like that, that the government who, um, which is uh, fostering pro-family policy uh, will um, see some immediate effect in the number of children being born. We can see that the trend is quite the opposite. I have to admit that when I'm listening to some thesis with regard to some threat uh, from the side of neo-Marxist ideology, I'm trying to consider what it's all about. Is it any real diagnosis? Is it the actual state of affairs, or is it just uh, threatening people? And in my opinion, is uh, to threaten people. When we talk about Marxist ideology, it has many streams. And I have to ask myself a question, what it's all about, indeed. Because when we talk, if I were to uh, interpret it in the positive uh, way, that there is something deeper in that, rather than threatening people, I would would expand the scope of freedom as Marxism was a part of European culture. And in this sense, I agree that some streams in the traditional uh, history are important and we should refer to the European uh, industry had enlightenment and then we had Marxism and then we had uh, feminism. So here it's all about expanding the scope of freedom. It's all about extending the scope of freedom and rights to individuals, no matter whether they're male or female, and no matter what is their sexual orientation. In our 
order to give them the freedom of expression, of speech, the sense of security to, to prevent them uh, and uh, not to allow that they should hide. Uh, so we should, uh, that is tolerance for different types of uh, families, different sexual orientation, and that also um, it's all about legal framework to see stable relationship, to allow people support one another, because, um, and to look for some support from the side of the, of the state. So I perceive all that on one hand, as being as respecting and be, being loyal to the European tradition and on the other side a project maybe I will surprise you that to some extent it's a conservative project which supports stability in relationship uh, human bonds which is a, a bit uh, related to so, so if somebody talks about um, adoption of kids and a stable relationship, these are conservative values. So we don't want to mock uh, these relationship instead. I wouldn't be afraid of that. I would appeal for things we have in common. And what we have in common is the conviction that we should support people and their existence in stable relationship. I think this is something that can connect us. Before I uh, hand over to uh, our panelists, I'd like to ask for another thing. You meant about extension of freedoms for some group of people, but don't you think it's a threat that expanding uh, the scope of freedoms to one group limits the, the rights of other people? For example, we can quote um, the MMA fight uh, in the United States when a woman had to fight against um, transgender women uh, because that was uh, we and and there, it was a massacre for that woman um, in Great Britain. We had some examples of girls being forced to use the same ladies' room as guys, uh, deeming and uh, t telling their uh, their boys and some distribution of contraceptives, which is widespread in the Western countries. We want to respect people, we don't want to exclude anyone, but don't you think that what you're talking about, that um, results in limitation of freedoms of majority? I think it's better to focus on some uh, concrete examples, not to paint any general picture of limitation to freedoms. In sports, we there is some kind of tension. There are some sports where gender differences and differences between sexes and biological differences are something that brings uh, some extent of inequality. And of course, we need some reasonable solutions and regulations that would cause that somebody that would prevent people from official change of sex in order to become a champion in a given sports discipline. Of course, that is up to discussion, and but that require a calm discussion. Mm, I respect athletes uh, as a noble rivalry, and here for sure it is possible to find out some solutions when it comes to uh, in the bathrooms and toilets, I, either you can prepare separate toilets or uh, just to, um, to, to have one uh, toilet for everyone. So toilets sometimes are not divided into separate
sexes. You can lock yourself in the cabin, of course, to, to have the sense of privacy, privacy. However, so that requires to jump over to take this leap in our heads. But this is not something that would destroy the foundations of the European civilization. So as, as far as I understood, the gender revolution, yes, but distortions, no. We know it from history, don't we? Yeah, let me comment that with one sentence. In my opinion, um, assigning right to same-sex marriages, it doesn't limit any right of heterosexuals to get married and have children. It's, so it's not like rev um, So I do not agree this is a revolution because it doesn't destroy the foundations of the former rights. So, but what the situation when mother is not only mother, but it's just a parent number one and parent number two. There are some examples of families with three fathers. These are just examples from real life. And now let me hand over to our dear panelist, a uh, question to um, Bartłomiej Wublewski. Don't, what do you think? Gender and cancel culture, these are two topics to buzzwords that are in the title of our panel, they are related to neo-Marxist ideology and philosophy. And independently from intention of creator, it is um, co-responsible and it became a program and the ideological basis for a communist system that led to great number of atrocities, uh, the greatest in history. and only that should make us think and um, should make um, should awake us but to some extent i agree to professor gdula and let me quote the piece the 11th who said about communism that in communism there are some things that we do agree on and every reasonable person would agree but the rest is a dangerous ideology and this is the approach that we should take uh, in contact with the gender and cancel culture uh, as as long as we um, see as we uh, agree that we should uh, take the the approach to sex as we can agree uh, what was the perception of the uh, role of the woman and man in uh, the ancient times and in Great Britain and in European Union. And these are re researches that are very important and very interesting. But if we understand gender as genderism, that the cultural sex is more important but that biological sex and cancels the, the previous one or negates it or it negates the natural bonds and the relationship between people. So, so something that is the foundation of our culture. So if it leads to undermining the traditional marriage, that becomes dangerous. And it's similar with cancel culture. There always, they, they have always been some forms of uh, extremism. Uh, we've been talking about political correctness in the 80s, when cancel culture became the cultural terrorism. This is the world where uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson couldn't exist. exist. Uh, William Shakespeare and uh, Sienkiewicz would be on the uh, uh, would be uh, would be heard by the court for for example this is a this is a tamed world slaved world even so it would lead to the destruction of pyramids it would lead in the evaluation of I didn't read but but some liberal 
political uh, journalist, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral, for example, Jan Capella uh, writes about it that the uh, reconstruction of Notre Dame de Paris uh, should be destroyed and shouldn't be rebuilt after the fire because it's a symbol of uh, um, uh, of atrocities. So. Um, and of oppression. So I do not see any opportunities in cancel culture. Of course, there are some um, points that we shouldn't discuss uh, that uh, we should, when we deal with uh, some um, uh, some pain to human, we should deal with that, of course. But with regard to what Professor Abdullah uh, said, I think that the good platform for um, these discussions would be around traditional uh, rights of individuals, especially the human dignity and freedoms as they were inscribed in the Polish Constitution. Let me point out that the Polish Constitution, which is a um, uh, result uh, of a work of liberal environments, and Professor Gdula tries to convince us that these um, postulations of a radical revolution are conservative. So, uh, and what about the Polish constitution that says that the marriage is the union of women and men? So is Professor Gdura trying to say that it was paleo-conservatism and it was paleo-conservative constitution? It just shows us the revolution we're dealing with. So uh, with reference to what Professor Gdura said, but also with regard to what Professor Zroszkowski said, I think that the good platform for discussion and the platform that I support, for example, by um, appointing the Polish Institute of Family and Demography. So that should be an institution defending and protecting children, defending the freedom of uh, associations and the freedom of meetings. So people have to have some need some space to express their uh, views, but at the same time we need uh, the same space for people with conservative and nationalist views, even if we don't like it. During uh, recently, we could see um, the discussion over the independence march, whether it should be organized in Warsaw or not. Of course, we shouldn't um, agree with all postulations of the independence march, but the the attempt to negate the possibility of uh, the organization of such um, meeting during which different patriotic groups can manifest their um, uh, faith and their respect for the post tradition. There are discussions whether we should have the um, pride marches uh, and an equality marches uh, in the Polish cities. We, we may don't like it, but we should agree that there are some people who need some space to demonstrate and to express their views. Of course, that might be related to some breaches to law. Of course, we cannot agree to slogans calling for a hatred, religious prof uh, profanation, uh, um, vulgarity, etc. We cannot agree to such things, yet the freedom uh, of speech should protect all um, actors of the political landscape. We can definitely agree with Professor Gdula uh, with his saying that tolerance is a, um, a value. Yet all the um, conflicts that we're talking about are a result of the solutions proposed by the revolutionary party, by the leftist uh, side uh, to the discussion. And the, uh, from uh, the part of the European Union, we already see a promotion of a certain promotion of certain groups, sexual behaviors, sexual attitudes. That's much more than tolerance. Marek Roszak, professor of the Łódź University, you have not yet had the opportunity to take the floor. What is your take on the discussion? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yaki.
Uh, Deputy Member of Parliament, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for creating these wonderful conditions for our discussion. Many thanks to, uh, uh, to the host for uh, letting me speak. And picking up on what my four speakers said, I'd say that I have nothing against what professor said. If we're talking about um, Mr. Gdula in turn, I am a philosopher, but also um, uh, logic uh, is my other uh, side of my professional practice. And I try to stick to logic. Then forgive me, Mr. Gdula, Professor Gdula, for my scholarly remarks. But I have noticed a certain tendency, um, a disconcerting tendency, uh, to uh, apply notions in a particular way. Namely, if you're talking about the Cultural Revolution, uh, its idea being uh, bourgeois or conservative, I understand that as a kind of joke. I don't think you are serious in saying that. But since we are discussing serious issues here, uh, let's keep jokes aside. And instead of uh, pulling each other's leg in the Marxist or Hegel manner, Let's leave that aside. Please, let's stick to uh, certain agreed on notions and definitions. And let me try and go in this direction in my time during this discussion to have certain basic notions defined. If we're talking about the gender doctrine, what are we talking about altogether? There's a number of components. Uh, related to one another. And the first and basic one is a thesis, a descriptive thesis. Rather, it's a thesis saying that um, the ideology is descriptive. It claims to be descriptive. Along the lines, there are no No final instance independent of the of man determinants of gender. That is, a person's sex uh, is not determined by anything of anthropologic uh, source, whether socially agreed upon or biologically. So that is the first thesis. As, as of today, in the current state of uh, affairs in biology and science, it is absurd. It's something we often laugh at. Let me play the role of uh, devil's advocate, but just for a second, if you're uh, disconcerted, if you're um, disturbed by that. And, uh, Natural sciences, there are no uh, uh, theses uh, that are um, fixed until you prove them otherwise. So we might say that uh, we might prove one day that sex can be changed overnight. It cannot be excluded. So the descriptive part of the genderist thesis can be seen as a postulate for the future. Namely, in the future, it might be possible, not as of today, but maybe in the future. But alongside that descriptive uh, component, there's a certain uh, accompanying thesis, complementary one, in the form of an evaluation, uh, namely the dichotomy between man, uh, male and female is some kind of oppression. It's oppressive in its character. It's a kind of oppression. It limits the freedom of the individual that it would like to express itself in a different sexual frameworks. This is uh, you know, doubtful, but uh, of course, this depends on the individual. I personally am not shot with the fact that I am a man. I might like 
to be a young, attractive lady, but I'm, I've put up with the fact that things are as they are, and um, I don't think I'm going to long, live long enough to have the possibility to change my um, gender status overnight. And the third element, sorry if I bore you, is the postulative component, namely the evaluation of this being uh, uh, oppressive. There's uh, the conclusion of need to limit, uh, rather since this is a limitation in human nature, then there is the postulate of freeing uh, man from uh, this uh, limitation. This is a Promethean strand in the whole picture, and this refers to all kinds of utopias that we've seen in the history of Europe. All utopias were about freeing man from this or that kind of limitation. From this point of view, the gender doctrine it builds upon Marxism because Marxism was a kind of promise to free man from class limitations. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a separate strand because I this is I'm not going to talk about this because this is not the issue of this discussion. But we might have opportunity to go back to this in a different opportunity. But still, I, I just say that this is not enough to call. Uh, gender, uh, a um, branch of neo-Marxism. I do not agree with that kind of classification at all. But there is no time to go into the details of this. This is not key in this discussion. So if we're talking about this last part on this last component of genderism, namely, we should strive to cancel this limitation in the form of gender dichotomy. Then you, we might conclude that genderists are right to the extent that there are no norms in uh, science, natural sciences. So if we say f the, the, the dichotomy is male-female is uh, empirical, this is uh, qualitative, uh, not empirical. Indeed, there is no such proof, scientific proof. We have to refer to a certain system of values to grant that, but not empirical sciences. Yet if this postulative aspect is taken into account, then we need to factor in two issues, namely, first, whether such a postulate is can be executed. It seems as of today that it is impossible and that such in-depth transformations of man's nature cannot be uh, done uh, painlessly, but we might not be there yet scientifically. And the other one is that even if it is possible, let us assume it is possible for simplification, then if it's possible, the question is, is that good? Let me not drag on, so let me just conclude in the form of a single sentence. I see, it seems to me that the assumption of genderism, it is a silent assumption, it assumes extreme individualism of humans, namely that humans are atoms completely independent of their surroundings. And the whether I am this or that gender, it's absolutely only and exclusively my own issue, personal one, like in the case of abortion. Um, that's how they see. They see women's uh, existence as atomic, uh, unconditioned by the conditionalities of the child in the womb. No attention is paid to the fact that society is based on certain horizontal relationships of human beings that pay services to one another, so to say, unprofessionally. And if such change is postulated by genderists, if that were possible, it is easy to come to the conclusion without 
too much debate, this would bring about a collapse of the social structure we function within. The question is, what would arise from that collapse? A tyrannic system, maybe, where individuals are subdued to the whim of a person who is capable of exerting physical pressure on them. If this led to such consequences, then attempts at implementing the doctrine should be seen as threat rather than opportunity. Is it easy to manipulate young people and brainwash them? It's easy to see on the example of a street survey carried out in the US where the question was asked of what was the difference between man and woman. The conclusion of the survey is that it's impossible to conclude whether a person is male or female based on external features. Now, going back to Mr. Gdula, Professor Gdula, um, the liquidation of these differences between genders, how should that improve the social situation and why would life be better once that goal is achieved? Tell us about this perfect world. In your opinion, you're as representative of the world of revolution. Tell us what do you fight for and what do you want to achieve? Maybe we are in big mistake and big error. I'm going to stick to the claim that this is not a revolution. It is a social change, rather. And since it's no revolution and it's only a change, it does not assume the cancellation of uh, sexes or going away from uh, the categories of male and female. Rather, it's about a reflection and um, it's a social movement, a cultural change which redefine what gender is and how we operate within family and sexual systems, meaning that we do not see um, gender as imposed, as given once and for all. It seems abstract uh, or unconvincing, but if you look at the issue from a, um, a practical point of view, from the point of view of practical everyday situations, you will see that gender is, for example, stating that the care of children is not the exclusive domain of women, but should be shared as a duty by men. The claim that only men should take care of children is the traditional uh, assumption because, you know, traditionally you will say that mm, women are uh, better at handling children while uh, men are better at uh, running, um, uh, riding across the step. While gender is claiming, stating that indeed that kind of duty can be shared. Fathers can also do part of that, share part of that burden. Not only mothers should be obliged to do that. And if we do not create the right conditions for families, for example, in the form of care institutions like kindergartens or preschools, then we're going to have fewer children. This is what's happening in Poland. We have 200,000 fewer births than um, deaths because there are no um, conditions for women to care to give birth. Women feel that women, um, pregnant women, are not safe, and this is something we want to fight. We want to create conditions for women. Uh, we want to introduce the possibility to abort precisely because the life situations are varied, not because men are atoms that are independent of other uh, parts of society and only interested in consumption and sex, but because people find themselves in all kinds of difficult social situations where there are social subjects and in which they should have the right to make uh, decisions, informed decisions based on their moral 
um, convictions, and this is simply rational. It's no revolution. Dear Member of Parliament, you have said you said so many things that I'd like to comment on so many. Uh, and for a man to care about children, we do not need any revolution. For example, I'm here today, and my husband is taking care of the children. It's enough to communicate. I'm on the part of uh, Professor Gdula. Uh, let me say that Adam Mickiewicz is also on his uh, side. Uh, like the quotation says. Ogłosił Ogłosił nam, że jacyś Francuzi wymowni zrobili wynalazek, iż ludzie są równi. Choć o tym dawno w pańskim pisano zakonie i każdy ksiądz też to samo gada na ambonie. Uh, Mówię o tym dlatego. I'm mentioning this passage because both mothers and fathers should partake in the education of children. This is uh, no innovation, and it's not something we argue about. Right, that's as things should be. Also, in a single-sex relationship, uh, one of the partners can uh, be uh, treated badly, abuse the other partner, like in a heterosexual relationship. So a revolution will not change uh, things here. No need for a revolution. On top of that, women after your revolution are in a worse situation where they are no better off because if a woman has to fight a marine in the ring, uh, well, they're, um, they don't stand good odds. If you have a joint lose, uh, like in the, the UK, um, there's a risk of uh, rape like it. Uh, it uh, has happened in the UK. Right, indeed, there are a lot of absurds of this ideology, indeed. Like in the case of every hard understood, hard ideology understood um, literally. What kinds of heuristic methods in this discussion uh, boils down to using notions in, uh, outside of the right context in a different uh, sense. We see the same example of this in the attempt at redefining the constitutional uh, terms. If the progressive left said, OK, we want to change the Constitution. We're going to change Article 18 so that uh, marriage is not a um, uh, between man and woman. Uh, we uh, uh, cancel freedom of speech so that you cannot refer to Shingevich, Mitzkevich, and all the others that incorrectly describe the reality. If the left said, we want to limit the, the right to live, starting, uh, you know, let's start it from the moment of birth or from the seventh year, year of age to the 70th, and point to premises where you're allowed to limit that right to live. That would be simply honest. You will get uh, social acceptance or not, and under that procedure, you can introduce those changes, although it's still not in line with natural rights, which are seen after Second World War as natural and um, assigned to every man. There is no attempt at introducing changes in law, though it's about redefining uh, some basic terms and notions in order to introduce changes without a discussion in the parliament. At a different level, we're dealing with that in the European Union. If we were told that it is believed that we want the EU to be a single state, therefore we carry out a referendum, we uh, delegate remit in terms of identity, defense, etc. Let European societies decide in the way of referendum for us to become a single, uh, single strong state. 
that would be honest, but instead we're dealing with a dishonest uh, attempt. If we're talking about identity, family, freedom, these are issues that do not lie within the remit of the EU. While we, ha we haven't seen a week without claims on the part of European institutions that based on treaties or uh, on basic values, we have to do this or that. So indeed, we are dealing with a situation in which um, Without uh, accordance with the democratic uh, the procedures, uh, changes are trying to be implemented in a bad direction, firstly, and with dishonest methods, secondly. Mr. Roszak, what about Poland? What changes will occur in Poland? Will they be the same as in Western Europe, or might we managed to defend Poland against that change. Well, I don't know what might happen to Poland. Unfortunately, this is not my field of expertise. I'm more competent in uh, logic and philosophy because I've tried to define these notions rather in an unbiased way, hoping that Mr. Gdula would agree to them for the needs of this discussion. But unfortunately, I come to the conclusion that I have not managed to convince Professor Gdula uh, uh, to drop that, um, uh, his practice of juggling these notions and redefining them. This is uh, aristic practices in, uh, in practice, really. I tried to present what was the core of the doctrine, the thesis of no objective determinant of gender, while a uh, professor is saying that not only uh, mom, but also dad can take care of children. You know, these are two separate things. Nobody will buy into this. Whether Mitskevich took that into account a hundred years ago, dear professor, this is a dishonest uh, practice and discussion. If you know anything about logic, this is uh, really obviously dishonest. Is this discussion? about who's better at heuristic uh, practices, or is it about reaching content-wise conclusions? I convince you, as a representative of the left, I like uh, your colleague last year, Mr. Sadulski, who's, who represented the left here last year, um, tried uh, to apply similar tricks of discussion. And I convince you, I um, encourage you to drop those tricks and instead focus on the content of the discussion. Although I do understand your application of Hegel uh, uh, in practice, you know, I think it's a waste of time since we have such a um, varied uh, group in uh, this. Let's uh, stop applying these discussion tricks. Mr. Gdula, are you not afraid of this revolution, although you don't want to call it revolution? In our opinion, it's a revolution, so let's call it change. Are you not afraid of this change leading to what Mr. Roszkowski mentioned, that is the crimes of totalitarianism in the name of beautiful ideas, beautiful words. Part of the left is, has also fallen victim to this. Let's just take the Razem party activist who uh, was attacked by colleagues because she protested against calling women uh, persons with vaginas. She said this was undermining uh, women's rights. She was canceled under the term of cancel culture. She was eaten alive by leftist media. So change is devouring its, of all, its own children, as you can see. What do you think about that? Now, I have a lot of points I would like to comment on very briefly. First, 
Let me comment on the definition of family in the Constitution, because this is often raised in discussion, not precisely as it should be, as it is formulated in the Constitution, because the, def the Constitution does not define family as a um, union of man and woman. No, it says that this kind of family is under special protection of the state. It just says that the, the state has certain obligations to uh, that kind of family. It's not family, it's marriage. And yet, that it, is, it stresses, uh, secondary law stresses that marriage is a union of man and woman so that you cannot, so that uh, attempts at redefining marriage are impossible. And the issue of this definition is rather obvious, and this was done by your colleagues from your political formation with full awareness what this was about, and that was the social expectation at that point, because the discussions we are now holding were already held back then in Europe. The Constitution was adopted by a wide political spectrum. PSL, Unia Wolności were represented, so a whole range of different parties, and it was a compromise. Yet the, f the definition, the, you know, the special protection of union of man and woman does not mean that this defines all kinds of union. It's obvious. No, it is not obvious, dear professor. The intention of uh, that act of law was obvious. It's not about the intention, but it's about what's written. But that's the interpretation of Polish courts as well. Let's let uh, the professor uh, finish. If not, it's difficult to um, discuss uh, online. About this revolution um, being to the benefit of women or not, uh, like Ms. Roshevich said, well, I think it's a rather obvious fact that it's to the benefit of women, and this is proven by uh, women support stronger, are stronger in their support for parties that uh, support this kind of change because more women vote for the left than the civic platform. So if you're saying that this is detrimental to women's rights, this questions the ability of women to define their best formulated interest. I think women are aware enough to decide what's good for them and what is not. Now, commenting on what Professor Ro Roshak said, that is the biological source of gender, let me refer to so sociobiology, which is a science that talks of the tie between the biological substrate with social life. And sociobiology, what flows from sociobiology is in line with what gender ID theory says. That is, it says among primates, there are very many different models of building relationships uh, between individuals. There are chimpanzees who are very aggressive, and there are bonobos who are completely unaggressive and have varied social relations. So sociobiology claims show that man has a lot of freedom, leeway, compared to its biological constitution. This is biological salvation, so-called. That is, it is independent of its biological equipment. Even biological science says that we have a large freedom of forming different relationships between individuals and that culture is more important today than biology. So in my conviction, you are irritated by my um, uncovering it um, demystifying this monster because there are all kinds of texts 
being written in foreign universities. You say that talk of destroying gender because it's an aggressive category. But gender, in its essence, says that we should go for such relationships between individuals to have more freedom, more leeway for women so that we can um, de eradicate violence against women. These are simple things that have should be agreed upon, you know, based on a simple rationale. I don't, I'm not sure I can fully agree. Let me just comment by with a single sentence because I just checked, Professor, the votes of women, uh, peace 43 percent, Coalitio Obywatelska 29 percent, SLT 12 percent. So it is not true that women mostly vote for the left. Altogether, left and Koalicja Obywatelska were voted for by fewer women than for law and justice. Let me just comment on that, please. If we compare left and uh, confederacy, the proportions are the exact reverse. More women, more young women vote for but, Professor, I just caught you. This shows that women rather are supportive of women, of uh, the left, sorry. It seems that the chimpanzee uh, thesis rather supports my thesis that is, um, things are independent of gender. So even in a traditional, in a heterosexual relationship, one person can abuse the other. Unfortunately, I have to conclude that you did not listen to me carefully. Um, I said clearly that I position myself in the role of the devil's uh, advocate. And the theory that the biological uh, gender is not determined by objective factors is a claim that might be undermined in light of science. And the question was whether, even if that's possible, is it worth going for that? And it seems clear to me that it's not worthwhile to go for such change. So, dear member, I don't know who you are disputing with at this point. I did not say that biology determines our gender. I just said that uh, in the current state of affairs in terms of science, there are certain uh, gender determinants that are non-transgressible, -transgress although that might change with time. So I'm just uh, you know, appealing for certain logic uh, order so that it's not a notion, word, cocktail, uh, where uh, you know, we are lost in the whole uh, picture which definitely is right. There might be people who have a problem with determining their gender, which does not mean we have to uh, organize a social revolution straight away to support them. We just need to tolerate them, include them in the society. It's uh, not about canceling genders straight away. We're running out of time, so just a sentence of summary, please, on the part of each of you. Thank you very much for this discussion. I'm under the impression that it's good that we're discussing because thanks to that we have this opportunity to uh, dispel and enchant some monsters uh, that uh, threaten us. Hopefully, I managed to show you that gender is not any threatening revolution coming here to destroy Polish families, but it's just a social process of social changes that may be beneficial to different groups, also to people uh, with conservative views. We should carry out changes in law 
to extend liberties of different people to protect their dignity. I think that in long perspective, we will see them coming. Hopefully, we will have legislation strengthening LGBT uh, people and offering them rights to same-sex marriages and strengthening them uh, in their pursuit of stable relationships. But we will also strengthen our country in order to build a stable family to give women um, state support to make them aware that there are institutions supporting them, that the National Labor Office protects them against losing job and police protects them from uh, acts of violence, for example, in cases of uh, home violence or rape, and that these crimes are treated seriously. These are issues that would cause that Poland becomes uh, the place to have children. Um, it will have positive demography and people will feel safe and at home. Now we have a lot of slogans about protection of family, about, about supporting a sound relationship, but the situation is far from perfect. It's far from um, the image of the Poland should have and far from reason. Professor Wroblewski, it goes beyond any doubt that every person has the right to dignity and should be treated with respect, that people have right to express their political views, that they should decide on their private lives and on their sexuality. And it goes beyond any doubt that mother and father should bring their uh, bring their children. And I think that we do agree on all these topics, but we do not agree to limit the freedom of speech, to exclude uh, the whole social groups from uh, expressing their views, uh, from cancelling 20 or 25 centuries of the European culture, and we do not agree for censorship of literature, and, un and we do not agree to unify a country in the leftist, extreme leftist manner. We do not agree for leftist ideas that will uh, reshape our uh, reality. We know that such revolutionary ideas, they didn't prove uh, successful in the past. Let's defend constitution. Let's stick to constitution in the way it was written at it used to be interpreted for at least 25 years when it comes to the protection of family life, uh, rights of parents and rights of children. If anyone uh, think that it should be changed, they are entitled to do so, but it should be done directly and not by juggling with words. Um, all these novel postulations and um, the slogans that were presented by Professor Gudula, uh, we share all of them, and uh, it has nothing to do with the main topic of our discussion and gender, as it's not the main ingredient of gender. These are just opinions which are shared by the majority of reasonable people. And I think that the concept of gender, um, and let me repeat, it has nothing to do with all that, what has been said. So the professor you just didn't have to convince us because we were convinced before. And uh, if it was the, if it were the, if it was the only purpose of this discussion, it would be fruitless. Thank you very much for your presence during this panel. The most important is that we managed to discuss. We uh, at tried to sit at the same table. Unfortunately, Professor Gdula couldn't join us for pandemic reason. But uh, hopefully, we will see more, more such conversations and discussions. And see you soon. Let me invite you to next panels and to stay with us by the until the end of this conference. Thank you.